circuit as it are crystal. Welcome back everyone. This is the third video of the 12th chapter of Crystal Clear Electronics called Debugging Troubleshooting in the program. It was Eloise, Here we are going to add a little to the program we used in the previous video to further explore debugging options. We are completing our little program to take a closer look at one more debug function. Let's open the LED counter project number two. The purpose of our change is not to change the state of the LED in every loop. To do this, we will need a variable, which we will call a counter. The value of this variable will be changed between 0 and 9. You may have been guessing what tricks we are going to make. Our new program increases the counter variable in each loop and when its value is smaller than a predefined number, in the example that it be 4, the LED will be turned on, otherwise it will be turned off. There is an intentional mistake in the program, which we will now discover using the debugging tool. First, let's see what we can see on the breadboard. The LED does not light up, although we have written a program that flashes the LED, according to the best of our knowledge. Turn on the line numbering. We can do this by clicking the line numbers checkbox under the text editor slash all languages tab in the tools slash options window. Start the program in debug mode. This can be done by pressing the F5 function button or by pressing the start debugging button. Then the program starts running. The LED is still off. In the next step, reset the processor using the reset or the shift F5 button. This is needed because if we stop the processor at any time, it will be over a lot of program lines because it is much faster than us. We can even avoid this step by starting the debugging with the start debugging and break that is Alt F5 button. Now go ahead with the step over or the F10 button. You can see that we have now jumped to line 14 where the counter is created. The next step is the IO init function call on line 16. If we step one more, we find ourselves on line 22. This line examines whether the value of the counter variable has reached 10. If not, it will increase it. We have to make it less than 10, so we don't have to increase it indefinitely. Step over it. Since the value of the counter variable was less than 10, it is increased as shown in line 24. Step over it again. Now we examine whether the counter variable is less than 4. If it is less, then we turn on the LED. If it's greater, then it will be turned off. Step over it again. The software stops on line 38, but it only indicates the end of the infinite loop in which our program runs, step it over as well. The LED is on and we are on line 22 at the evaluation of the counter variable. In order to find where things happen differently than our plan, it would be good to see the current value of the variables. To do this, move the mouse over a copy of the counter. In this case, we can see the current value of the variable. If you click on the small drawing pin symbol, the small window will remain there. Alternatively, you can display it in the watch window by typing the name of the variable in a free field of the name column. Now move the code by pressing the F10 button, which is more convenient than clicking on the step over button. We can see that the value of the counter is constantly increasing, and when it reaches 4, the LED turns off. This is because the expression in line 28 becomes false, so we will jump to line 36. When the value of the counter reaches 10, an interesting phenomenon can be observed. The value of the counter changes no longer. This is because we only increase the value if the counter is less than 10, but it's never going to be less than 4. With this, we found our fault. 
By finding the fault, we can plan how to fix the code. Try to fix the code on your own and check the solution. If you succeed, we're delighted. Now you can pause the video to try this. Yeah, I hope many have stopped it. Let's look at the solution. Indeed, the counter must be reset if it has reached its maximal desired value. Try the fixed version if it wasn't good until now, then experiment with other values between 0 and 9 instead of 4. We can see that the higher this value, the brighter the LED will light. Sabolch, I uploaded our code to the microcontroller and started it running. I had to think a bit, as our counter takes values between 0 and 9 and the LED is on for less than 4, so it is on about 40% of the time, the rest of the time it isn't. So to speak of with a 40% duty cycle. I actually found this strange at first, that it's not off, it's not on, full brightness, it's kind of flickering. That's true. This was the third video of the 12th chapter on debugging. Please stay tuned for the fourth. Bye bye. Bye.